Hi everyone, welcome back to my 1973 series. Uh, 1973 was 40 years ago this year, and since I was born that year, I'm turning 40 this year, and I wanted to sort of take a look back at some of the stuff that came out that year, kind of get an idea of what was, uh, what were the films that came out, what was, what, what was, what were the popular cinema subjects, or, or something like that. So I'm, I've been looking at a variety of stuff, and a lot of these have been recommendations by people. Uh, for example, the last movie I did was, um, uh, Save the Tiger, which was recommended to me by Dr. Hasselin. Uh, and I've also done Serpico, recommended by 99 Filmo, and also Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid. Um, and The Last Detail with Jack Nicholson, which was recommended by Filmspeak. And The Holy Mountain, which was recommended by Cupcake Jack. And I've done The Exorcist, which was suggested by Oktoberfest 1974. Um, and I've got a few more as well. But uh, today I'm doing Sisters, which was recommended by Benway 20. So I wanted to thank all you guys, because I know I haven't mentioned your names in previous videos. I want to thank you guys for uh, watching and recommending stuff. And I invite more recommendations. I've got a list of, uh, you know, what I'm going to be doing. But, uh, of course, could always use more. I'd like to cover, you know, about 50 movies this year uh, from 1973, if I possibly can. Um, so, Sisters <clears throat> is directed by Brian De Palma. Um, and he's a director I'm very familiar with, watched lots of his movies. Uh, over the years. Um, he's got a new one coming out with uh, Numi Rapace and Rachel McAdams. I believe it's called Passion. Um, most recently he did uh, um, I think his 2002 movie was uh, with Rebecca Romaine and that was called Femme Fatale. Um, since that time I think he's done at least one other movie but I don't recall what it was. It wasn't something that I saw I don't think. But he did the first Mission Impossible movie. He did The Untouchables, Mission to Mars, as well as um, a lot of Hitchcock ripoffs. Uh, he did Carrie. He did uh, Blowout. He did Dress to Kill, Raising Cain, uh, Casualties of War, which is a Vietnam movie. You know, he's done a, a variety of stuff. But he's mostly known for, he's best known for aping Hitchcock films, ripping him off, some would say or paying homage, as others would say. And The Sisters is definitely in that vein. It, it, it's, uh, it's, it strongly emulates Psycho. <clears throat> so uh, the main character, I'm not familiar with a lot of these actors actually, so bear with me here. The main character appears to be played by Lyle Wilson, um, who appears on a game show in the first uh, scene of the film and ends up meeting an actress who's played by Margot Kidder. Her name is Danielle. He ends up taking her out for a drink and then taking her back to her place um, and uh, then he's killed. <laughs> you think he's the main character, and then he dies, just like Marion Crane in Psycho. Um, and uh, Danielle apparently has an identical twin sister who used to be conjoined, used to be attached to her uh, physically, um, named Dominique, who she blames for the crime. But when I saw this, I thought to myself, okay, here we go with Psycho again. Norman Bates goes up to the house, has a big loud argument with his mother uh, that Marion Crane can hear all the way from the motel. But of course, Norman Bates' mother isn't actually alive anymore, has been for, hasn't been for years, and so he has multiple personality disorder. And I kind of figured that was the same thing happening with Danielle. Um, but uh, I won't confirm that. I'll, I'll let you sort of see for yourself if you haven't already. Um, Danielle is played, by the way, by Margot Kidder, who played Lois Lane in the original Superman movies with Christopher Reeve. Um, and uh, she looks great. She looks great in this movie. This was um, 70, 79, I think, that came out. So this is like six years before uh, the first Superman movie. Um, she plays a French-Canadian, so she has a, a French accent. And I was just waiting for her to drop the accent and reveal that she actually was you know, not French at all, that she spoke in a normal American accent, because Margaret Kidder's American, but uh, that didn't happen. She uh, stuck with the French accent throughout the whole movie. She has some trouble with her ex-husband, uh, who's been hanging around bothering her, but after the murder, um, she needs his help to clean up the crime before the cops come. Now, it just so happens that across from her apartment is the apartment of a journalist uh, called, named Grace Collier, who's played by Jennifer Salt. Uh, Grace calls the cops, uh, whom she's not very popular with because she's written articles uh, criticizing them. And she says, I just witnessed a murder. It's in this apartment. Can we go and see? And <laughs> Danielle and her ex-husband managed to clean up the mess in her apartment, the blood all over the white carpet in re record time. I mean, they make the thing 
clean really, really fast, ridiculously so. So that was a little hard to buy into. They stashed the body in the couch and then later move it out, but they've cleaned up most of the traces so that the cops won't suspect that there's, that's anything wrong. But the journalist, Grace, is not convinced, and so she makes it her business to find out what happened. Um, the first half of this movie is pretty cool. The second half, things get a little bit out of control. Um, Grace ends up hiring a PI, played by Charles Durning, who's going to follow the couch to wherever it's going, uh, while Grace decides that she's going to f uh, follow Danielle and her ex-husband to see where they're going, despite Charles Durning telling her not to. Um, and then things get really crazy. There's a mental hospital involved. There's hypnosis or brainwashing. All kinds of crazy stuff starts happening, and... There's a bunch of story threads just kind of left hanging at the end of the movie. I wanted to see a little bit more. I wanted to know what was going to happen after that. But uh, all in all, kind of an unsatisfying experience for me. So this wouldn't be the first Brian De Palma movie I'd recommend. And not certainly 1973 has produced better movies than that. It was significant for De Palma, I think, because it was one of those movies at the start of his career that really sort of helped make his name and made him into the director that he became. Um, but so all in all, I'm not crazy about it. Some parts of it that I liked... Um, but all in all, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't that big on it. Um, so I'm going to be doing more 1973 movies, of course, and I, again, invite recommendations. Um, got a list already of a bunch of things I'm planning on doing, but I'd like more because I want to do at least uh, 50 for the year, you know, one for like each week or so uh, this year, which would be great. So thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again real soon. Oh, and my contest is going on. There's still like a week and a half left to enter if you want to do that. So please do. Thank you. Bye.